The Army Upgrade Channel continues to give you a look at the most promising weapons from around the world. Today we look at France's largest drone, the Eric. The newly secretly developed Eric Medium Altitude, Long Endurance Drone is scheduled to take to the air by the end of this year. The French Eric was shown as a prototype on the eve of the Paris Air Show trade show. The ARC Unmanned Aerial System, or UAS, is a new addition to the medium altitude long endurance aircraft male segment and is designed for reconnaissance surveillance and reconnaissance isr missions as well as strike missions for this purpose it is planned to carry the french made aasm hammer a high precision weapon with increased standoff and different sizes of warheads the eric with a maximum takeoff weight of about 5.4 tons has a 72-foot wingspan that is slightly larger than the American-made MQ-9A Reaper, but the fuselage is much more bulky. The Eric is powered by a 1,200 HP Pratt & Whitney Canada PT-6 turboprop engine, powered by a conventional front propeller. The Eric has a maximum payload of 6,000 pounds, including up to 3,300 pounds of weapons. The drone is planned to have an autonomy of more than 24 hours. These parameters put the Eric in a category generally similar to the MQ-9A Reaper, which is already in service with the French Air Force. The manufacturer states that the drone is designed for ISR missions, strike missions, maritime surveillance, and multi-domain relay communication. The Army Upgrade Channel brings you interesting defense developments from around the world. The French-built Rafale M from Dassault Aviation will be the Indian Navy's next-generation deck fighter after New Delhi gave the initial go-ahead for the purchase of 26 aircraft. The Rafale M fought off competition from the Boeing FA-18E F Super Hornet and is slated for acquisition as part of a French arms package that will also include three Scorpion-class diesel-electric attack submarines. The Indian Navy had earlier bought six Scorpion submarines from France at a cost of $2.29 billion, with the last of them to be commissioned next year. The combined deal will be worth about $9.75 billion. Not only is the Rafale already in service with the Indian Air Force in its ground-based configuration, but it has also amassed an impressive list of export successes, including a huge order, including for a ground-based version, from the United Arab Emirates. The Rafale M will provide the deck fighter for the Indian Navy's newest aircraft carrier INS Vikrant, also known as Indigenous Aircraft Carrier 1, IAC-1, which first put to sea in August 2021 after long delays. This carrier is configured for the short takeoff but delayed recovery, or STOBAR concept of operations, while the Rafale M and Super Hornet were designed for use with a catapult launcher. As for INS Vikrant, there were questions about the suitability of the carrier for Rafale or Super Hornet operations. The ramps are apparently also being scaled for the Russian-made MiG-29K KUB point-to-point fighter, which is currently in service with the Indian Navy aboard the aircraft carrier Vikramaditya, which was formerly the Russian Navy's Admiral Gorshkov. It is unclear at this point what modifications may be required to handle the larger Rafale. Notably, however, the French aircraft is slightly larger, with a wingspan of 35 feet 9 inches. The Super Hornet, which features folding wings, is 30 feet 6 inches when folded. The elevator on the carrier is 32 feet 10 inches wide. These kinds of problems should be absent on the Indian Navy's next homegrown aircraft carrier, INS Vishal or IAC-2, which is planned to be much larger, about 65,000 tons, compared to 40,000 tons for Vikrant. This new warship is expected to draw on American and British inputs for development and may be equipped with an electromagnetic aircraft launching system, EMALS, instead of a springboard, after the United States approved the transfer of relevant technology to India. The Mach 2 will undoubtedly be scaled from the outset to operate fighters larger than the MiG-29K. Obviously, the Rafale M is already capable of catapult-assisted takeoff but stop-start recovery, Katobar if India does adopt this approach for the IAC-2. However, it is worth bearing in mind that these Indian carrier aviation developments continue to be overshadowed in size and scope by regional rival China. Not only does Beijing have two aircraft carriers in service, one of which is built in-house, but a new indigenous design is taking shape that is expected to include EMALS rather than a jump ramp. There are rumors that China's fourth aircraft carrier could be even larger than its predecessors, possibly with nuclear propulsion. At the same time, 
China has a homegrown stealth deck fighter on test, as well as a fixed-wing long-range radar detection deck plane and other developments, including deck drones. The order for 26 Rafales is good news for the Indian Navy and the country as a whole, for which its prowess in carrier-based aviation is a matter of considerable pride. A subsequent order for more Rafale is also likely to be linked to the multi-role carrier-borne fighter, MRCBF, competition won by the French fighter, which originally called for 57 aircraft. New Delhi has already rejected the HAL Naval Light Combat Aircraft, LCA, the Indian Air Force's deck-mounted version of the Tejas, which could potentially challenge the Rafale M for future orders. With this in mind, the prospects for the French Rafale M fighter in India look very good. See all about the secret technology of the U.S. Air Force's B-21 Raider stealth bomber. The Channel Army upgrade continues to acquaint you with the most promising models of different countries around the world. Today we are looking at a new tank. This ground combat system of the future, main ground combat system, MGCS, it is made jointly by the French and Germans, will replace the Leopard 2A7 of the Bundeswehr and AMX-56 Leclerc of the French Armed Forces. Germany and France at the beginning of the 21st century have drastically reduced the number of combat tanks, up to 306 and 200 respectively. French concern Nexter and German company Krauss Maffei Wegmann initially hoped to survive by selling Leclerc and Leopard 2 tanks abroad. But it did not work out. Tanks of the new production were bought reluctantly. As is known, the first experience of the Turkish army in combat use of Leopard 2A4 tanks was unsuccessful. In total, it destroyed 10 tanks in a day, at that using old Soviet, FAGO, anti-tank guided missiles and RPG-7 grenade launchers. It is interesting that UAE troops, which fought in Yemen, did not take care to put their Leclerc tanks on the battlefield, so the real capabilities of the machine are still unknown. To cut costs a joint German-French venture was formed that introduced a concept of a single European tank, a hybrid of the Leclerc turret on a Leopard 2 chassis. It aroused skepticism among specialists. Since this situation threatened the bankruptcy of German and French tank manufacturers, the governments decided to launch a joint development program for a new generation main battle tank in 2019. Interestingly, France and the FRG had previously tried to organize joint tank development and production, but the undertaking failed, as well as on the creation of a joint tank, the US and the FRG. Potential volume of joint purchases of new generation tanks by Germany and France is unlikely to exceed 500 tanks. Moreover, this prospect is post-2035. So far, little is known about the new Euro tank. It must have a number of protection features, able to withstand all major threats. Combined hull and turret armor will be complemented by dynamic protection. Armor and overhead elements will have to provide protection against both shells of different types and mines or explosive devices. Optical instruments will be protected against laser radiation, preventing blinding of the tank and its crew. The new ground combat system will have a set of sensors and detection tools that help increase survivability on the battlefield, such as optical, infrared, acoustic and other sensors. A new laser-based optronic suppression system is being proposed. It will be able to fight the enemy's optics, first and foremost the sighting devices of anti-tank armored vehicles. At the moment, Funding has been obtained to develop unified tactical and technical requirements for the future MBT, which will form the basis for the statement of work. Accordingly, neither the layout of the tank nor the configuration of its principal systems that ensure firepower and protection have been determined. All about the US Navy Blue Angels aerobatic team can be seen at the end of the video at the link. See you on Army Upgrade Channel.